In the late 19th century, a Jewish sports movement sprang up called the Maccabea. It was often the only outlet for Jewish athletes who were excluded from their local and national clubs. Its philosophy was to encourage Jews to become physically strong, to combat anti-Semitism, and to imbue them with a national identity. In a series of bold and innovative PR exercises, groups of bikers set out from the British Mandate of Palestine to find athletes to take part in the first Maccabea Games in Tel Aviv in 1932. The Games would offer the athletes and their families a safe haven from the increasing persecution in Europe. Now, 80 years later, for the first time ever, the Games will be held in Berlin, the crucible of Hitler's final solution. 11 bikers embark on a unique journey. Setting off from Israel, they carry the Maccabea torch to Berlin. For some, it's a chance to learn about the past. For others, it's a chance to reveal it. This is a story of survival, redemption, and discovery. A journey that will take them back to Berlin. Among them is Gal Marom, whose grandfather Solomon was one of the original riders. I'm living in Jaffa. I'm an architect. In the 1930s, there were three groups of bikers that went out from Palestine through the world and through uh, Europe especially. This is, this is a picture that uh, took place, I think, uh, in uh, Montreal. This is the biker. This is uh, all the guys that are from the Jewish community. And uh, basically what weird in this uh, photo, that this is, this is my grandfather. And uh, someone, or maybe he, wrote his name, Solomon, here under his uh, image. He joined 10 other male and female bikers, some of them relatives of Holocaust survivors. Among them, Danny and his 78-year-old father, Yoram. I'm Danny Maron, son of Yoram. I'm a press photographer here in Israel for the last uh, 25 years. And uh, I'm glad that I make uh, this journey with my father. For me, it was a huge opportunity to understand and to know something about my father and my family history. There were two reasons why I decided to go. One, physically, to prove to myself that I still can ride more than 400 kilometers a day. And uh, the second one was a ride to my past. It was uh, something that I could only dream to arrive at the, the Olympic Stadion in Berlin with my son. In 1936, the Olympic Games were hosted by Germany. In direct contrast to Olympic ideals, the Nazi party used the Games to spread its propaganda of Aryan supremacy. The world outside Germany claimed to know little about Hitler's anti-Semitic agenda until he issued a ban on German Jewish athletes participating in the 1936 games. There was an international outcry, followed by threats of boycott. Hitler relented and reluctantly allowed only one German Jew to compete. As the American delegation set sail from New York, on board were Marty Glickman and Sam Stoller, the only two Jews on the American track and field team. As an athlete, this was a goal for any track and field performer to make the Olympic team and to participate in the Olympic Games and perhaps even to win a medal, perhaps even a gold medal. I could show the rest of the world that a Jew could be just as good as anyone else. The two Jewish athletes were preparing for the men's 4 by 100 meter relay race when there was a shock announcement. 
Well, the morning of the day we were supposed to run the relay, all the sprinters were called into a meeting. And uh, Robertson said, Marty and Sam were going to be replaced by Jesse Owens and Ralph Metcalf. That was a complete shock to all of us. As the, flaming Olympic torch is born along. the ritual of carrying the Olympic torch from Greece to the host city was resurrected by Germany in 1936 to mark the transfer of power from Olympia to Berlin. For today's riders, the passing of the torch will carry a greater significance. Like the Germans in the 1936 Olympic Games, we are carrying the torch from Athens to Berlin, but with a small detour. Carrying the torch back to Berlin will cover nearly 3,000 miles of roads across southern and central Europe. The journey will be challenging in ways that none of them could have expected. The bikes leave the port of Haifa on the coast of Israel and travel to Athens in Greece, where the riders discover that flying the Israeli flag may prove problematic. I don't think it's a good idea. Wow. I'm really sorry to say that's, that's really shocking, I must say. Yes, and it, probably it's the only flag in the world that you cannot raise in Greece so easily. The bikers travel north from Athens to Greece's second largest city, Thessaloniki the home of Kobe's grandparents before the war. I'm Kobe Shmuel, and I'm working in the industry in Oman-Nut. My family, from my mother's side, is from Yavan, from Saloniki. My father and my father started at Auschwitz. Basically, what he did, this trip, beyond all the pain and all the feelings and the feelings, is basically a story for my father. ידעתם שאתם נוסעים לאושוויץ או לפולין או לאיזה מקום, או שלא ידעתם בכלל לאן אתם נוסעים? לא, לא ידענו איפה אנחנו הולכים. אז המשכנו, ירדנו בדיוק בבירגנאו. נשארנו בערך שמונה ימים שם, אחר כך לקחו אותנו לעבודה. עבודה היה לנו מאוד קשה. מהבוקר עד הערב לכבישים, לבנות קירות, דבר שלא ידענו דבר כזה, אבל עשינו, היינו מוכרחים. אם לא, היה כלבים שהיה אוכלת אותנו. היה לסבתא שלי תשעה אחים, אחים אחיות. אח אחד ניצל, הם, הם לקחו אותם. והתחילו, אמרו להם שהם יוצאים לחיים חדשים. הזוי, קנו את הכרטיסים, עלו על הרכבות. חבל שאני לא יכול לסגור פה את הדלת, אבל uh, אתם מבינים uh, מה... מה... מה הקירות האלה ומה הרציף הזה? תחשבו, תחשבו שיש פה קרוב ל-150 איש, ל-200 איש, שהם נדחקים בחום, ילדים, אימהות, נשים בהיריון, ופשוט נוסעים ונוסעים ונוסעים, וזה לא נגמר. 
החום הזה. עשר, עשרה ימים, עשרה ימים לקח להם להגיע לאושוויץ. מישהו שרד? אנשים מתו בקרונות, ולאחר שהם הגיעו לאושוויץ, 50, קרוב ל-60 אחוז מכה אחת הרגו. אני בכוונה לא יוצא, אני רוצה להרגיש עוד ועוד ועוד את החום הסבל הזה. Too hot. I, I couldn't, uh, couldn't stay inside, and uh, I joined this journey uh, two months pregnant. And uh, I'm trying to imagine people, women inside, maybe pregnant, little children, ten days on the train, going nowhere. They don't know where they're going. Without food, without water. But we are always hearing about the Holocaust. But to feel, to feel the rain, to feel the heat, to hear the story, I don't know, I can't, I can't, I can't even explain what I'm feeling. It's, it's too much, it's too much. Safta Shli, Nitzla, and Saba Shli. They came in 1946, in the village of the Chaviv Araik. והם בנו את הבית שלהם שם. כשאוניית המעפילים התקרבה לחופי ארץ ישראל, הבריטים אה, תפסו את, ה, את, אה, את המעפילים עם האונייה וגררו אותה לחוף. אה, הספינה הזאת, המעפילים, היו במעצר בערך משהו בסביבות שנה בעתלית. רוב המעפילים שהגיעו מאירופה בעצם נתפסו ונשלחו ישר למחנות העקורים בקפריסין. The camps are bitter reminders of the recent past. Here, 60,000 illegals are forced to stay. In futile rebellion, newcomers shout at Dachau, Buchenwald, Auschwitz. But it's to no avail. Under a quota, only 750 people a month will be allowed into Palestine. And under armed guard, they wait. Neither starved, nor beaten, nor tortured. But prisoners without identity. Behind barbed wire again. Still, from Cyprus, it's but a night's journey to Palestine. Tell me about your friends before the war. No, I'm going to tell you. מה הם עבדו, מה הם עשו, מה הם... עבדו. נו, אל תשאל אותי. לא, טוב. From Greece, the bikers travel on to Bulgaria, which holds a personal significance for Gili Shemtov. I, I am very nervous and I'm very excited to be here because I've never been to Bulgaria and I never learned my family past in Bulgaria. Only since they came to Israel, I know some details, but not from Bulgaria. My grandfather was born here in Samokov. He always talked about Samokov and as his place of birth, Samokov was in his heart. And he was very special for me. 
all his life, he stood up for the working people, fighting for social justice. I think a lot of things he got from here, from uh, Bulgaria, by being involved in the community, the Bulgarian community, not only the Jewish community. He joined Maccabi here in Bulgaria when he was young, learned Hebrew, learned how to work farms, and he taught me that everyone are equal. גם דיברנו איתה, נשארו בקיוסטנדיל, הם היו חלק מאלה שקיבלו את ההוראה לארוז ולחכות למשלוח. הסוכם שהם הגיעו מיהודי בולגריה. ונחתם הסכם סודי שב-10 למרץ, שנת 43, יישלחו כ-9,000 מיהודי בולגריה למחנות, לפולין ולגרמניה, להשמדה. הם כבר ממש קיבלו ב-10. בתשיעי בערב הם קיבלו הודעה גם כאן בסמוקוב ובכל מיני ערים הם קיבלו הודעה הייתה פה רוכזו באיזשהו בית ספר כאן חיכו לעלות לרכבות הרכבות כבר היו בתחנות וזה היה עניין של כמה שעות שגם הנוצרים וקיריל ממש נעמד באחת מתחנות הרכבת לפני הרכבת מול החיילים הגרמנים ואמר פסוק מהתנ״ך באשר תלכו אלך Your people are my people, your God is my God, ולא אפשר את זה. וכעבור כמה שעות הגיעה המשטרה לכל המקומות שבהם רוגזו היהודים, אמרו להם, אתם משוחררים, אתם יכולים ללכת הביתה, בוטלה ההחלטה. עכשיו, אם, אני חושבת שאם קהילות אחרות היו מתנהגות ככה, אולי היינו שומעים על עוד הרבה סיפורים אופטימיים כאלה. זה... איש של שפיות בתוך הטירוף הזה שהיה במלחמת העולם השנייה, כן. באמת סיפור. Not all of the atrocities of the Holocaust were perpetrated by the Nazis themselves. As the bikers cross the border into Romania, they're met by another rider who will join them on the next leg of their journey to Berlin. I am Maximilian Marco Katz. I am a business manager and administrator. I am from Romania. What happened in this synagogue in January 1941? It was that my grandfather, Marco Katz, the one that I made, named after, he was here praying together with other Jews from Bucharest. The legionnaires pulled all the Jews out of the synagogue, among them my grandfather, and they started to torture him. My uncle, Isidor Katz, begged them to release his father and to take him in his place. They did not release the old man, but they kept the son. And the front of the old man, they started to torture the son. The Romanian fascists took Marco's uncle, together with 155 other Jews, to one of their centers for torture, Jalava Fort No. 13. So my uncle was brought here. 
He was brought here when he had already one of the shoulder pulled out. I don't know how I feel. I'm just trying to figure out how my uncle felt when he was brought here. brought from the fort here, stripped naked, beaten up, and then shot in their heads. So this is the way Isidor Katz, my uncle, died. Other Jews, they were taken in the center of Bucharest to a slaughterhouse. And 15 of them, they were killed there in the same manner. They were shot and then they were hanged. They were hooked up and on their naked bodies, there was written kosher meat. So my name is Garol Munz. I'm a surgeon. When I knew about this project. For me, it was the Romanian Holocaust because nobody did even know that there, there were Holocaust in Romania. Actually, they didn't know. And my parents are survivors. So I, I felt the Holocaust at my, uh, when I was brought up, you know. And for me, I, I, I actually thought that, well, I can't, can't understand how so many people could have gone, you know, and perish without any resistance. So I didn't, I sometimes used to talk about them with that, uh, on that, on that issue, and I never got any, you know, any um, cooperation from my mother, neither from my father. I said, okay, it wasn't like that, but we don't want to talk about it. The Romanian uh, army came into the village. They had a, a loudspeaker and they said that by tomorrow morning, everybody has to uh, come with one suitcase and leave all your belongings back, take only what's necessary and all the families and, and uh, come to the train station. This is how it started. And my mother remembers her mother holding her up to, to, to have some air because it was, they were when, stuffed. When was that? 41, 41, 41 June. June, yeah. My grandfather, at that time, he was caught by the legioners. It was 1940, by mid-1940. And he was uh, jailed, tortured, beaten. And the only thing that saved him was the earthquake that uh, was from in Romania from 1940. Everything collapsed at that building where the legioner's uh, office was. And he was uh, hung upside down, totally beaten, bruised, and so on, but he fell down. He could, um, you know, open the, the bondings and so on, and he escaped. And it took him a few months to get back to Suchalo because of the situation, because of his situation. In order to feel what they feel, you need to be in that location at that time in that condition. But this is the thing, Marco. I don't want to feel what they feel. I want to understand what they feel. I okay. understand. I understand. My dad is not talking at all. I can't... And he, whenever I, and I talk to him, and he's totally clear in his mind, he, he, he doesn't, he doesn't he talk. Refuses. He refuses. He kind of refuses to talk about it. It's a black hole. When we ride the bikes in Romania, we love the, the biking there. Went through the lovely mountains, and, and it, it was amazing. The, the biking part of this story is kind of, you know, it's just it's not just to bring us from A to B with the bike. It's 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 a very important part of the whole thing. It's it's a tour. You're doing a tour, like a half of Europe or something like that.
pretend to, to, to make my story bigger than any story. I think all the stories in this uh, tour are small stories that are part of the bigger picture. All the stories were horrific and the same. It's like the same, it's just different people. More people died in one place than, than the other, but still, it was the same, same, same Holocaust. When the 1936 Olympics ended, Hitler ramped up his campaign against the Jews. The Jews of London are marching today to denounce Adolf Hitler's anti-Semitic policy. It became increasingly difficult for the world to ignore. German-made goods. In 1938, אבל בפועל לא נעשה שום דבר. בעצם העולם סגר את הדלתות שלו בפני יהודי גרמניה, ובכלל בפני יהודי אירופה. As the team travels along the border between Hungary and Serbia, they are met by thousands of refugees and hundreds of border police, armed guards and troops. country, a border like this, sad, sad. We are from Israel. I know. Yes. In my school, we say Israel is my enemy. You have to fight Israel. You have to, to destroy Israel. No, it's closed, okay. Near Roska? Yeah, near Roska. Is it open, the border? The small one is open, okay. the big one is closed. Oh, okay. It's not a biking uh, trip. It was really a journey for, uh, for every one of us. All the time I heard my grandfather in my head and tried to, uh, to connect to his experience along the way. But the difference between then and today is that uh, those days they could uh, go up on their bikes and just drive, you know, around the world without any customs, without any borders. They went to Alexandria, they went to Libya, to Lebanon. Uh, even one expedition I heard that uh, went uh, through Syria. <laughs> אני מלא התרגשות, אין לי חיבוק, אני מלא התרגשות. תודה רבה, אני בהחלט אשמח לשים. The 1935 bikers set off amidst a backdrop of growing anti-Semitism. In September of the same year, Nazi Germany had created its Nuremberg Laws, which had a crippling economic and social impact on the Jewish community. 
They were subsequently expanded to include homosexuals, all Romani people, Afro-Germans, and the disabled. These people became what Germany called enemies of a race-based state. Despite this threat to their safety, the 1935 bikers continued their epic mission, visiting Jewish communities to spread their message. And today's riders are doing the same. שם אנחנו נגיע וניכנס עם האופנועים לתוך הטקס של הפתיחה של המכבייה. הם יודעים. בטח. אני אבל אתם גם ספורטאים? אתם גם תשתתפו בתחרות? רובנו כבר עברנו את הגיל של הספורטאים, אבל אני הייתי ספורטאי, אני הייתי שחקן כדורסל במכבי תל אביב. איזה מדיני? באמת? איך קוראים לך? לא, לא ידוע, זה היה לפני המון שנים. קוראים לי גל. גל My mother is never speak about the Holocaust, never. Because it's don't want, uh, I am involved um, emotion about that. Yeah. After years, I am starting to ask the questions about the, the Holocaust. It's coming for me. This is, I think it's better. Wow, it's alive. Wow. Oh. We ride with the Israeli flags on. What do you think the response we're going to get? Um, some people might not be yes, happy, and no, some, some people might just, you know, okay, Israelis. I'm a mother of two children, boy and girl, Jade and James. Uh, I'm a farmer. I have a personal connection to everything that happened with the Maccabiah Games. My grandmother was photographed with those bikers that came to Lithuania to tell about the Maccabiah Games, to think that after I got involved with all this journey, that uh, to think that my grandmother actually met those bikers for me was a huge, huge excitement. My grandparents left Europe from Lithuania uh, just before the Holocaust, and they left when they uh, realized that uh, Europe became too dangerous and too difficult uh, uh, for Jews. They made a choice, and the choice was to look at what's happening and move on and find a new place for them to live in and their decision saved their life. Their entire family was destroyed in the Holocaust. As the bikers travel further into Hungary, they reach the banks of the river Danube, the site of an atrocity at the hands of the Hungarian fascists, the Arrow Cross. They meet Alex Rosenkrantz, whose mother survived the events at the Danube in 1944. Alex has traveled from Berlin to meet the bikers with his daughter Talia and to share his mother's story with her for the first time. Look at this shoe. Also children's shoes. They have everything burned. Everything that's made. They've come to the memorial site for those who were brought here as part of Hungary's final solution offering to Hitler. They were rounded up in their thousands, their shoes removed for monetary value, and their laces used to bind their hands. My mother's family who lived here before the war, 
a very cultured family, musicians. And in the 1944s, the Jews were killed here at the Danuba. And what happened is that the Hungarian Nazis, they called Arrow Cross, they came to these houses with trucks. And, uh, and they brought them here to the Danuba. And they killed them here. They shot them here and threw them into the water. And the whole Danuba was red. For days and days, it was a red river because all the thousands of dead Jews. My mother was sitting on one of these trucks. And what happened is that a German Nazi officer came by, saw my mother, who was so beautiful, and he forced her down from this truck and sent her back to the house, and so she survived. And all the others on the truck were killed here at the Danuba. Nobody came back. That's the story of my mother, how she survived. She came after that into a labor camp where she escaped from that, and that's what I know. Not too many of our families survived. I was shocked. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know what happened here. I've never heard the story. Uh, I didn't know how his mother was saved. Uh, it's a beautiful story, in some way, and a terrible one too, of course. bikers travel in convoy through Budapest. Their presence causes concern for the authorities, and a police escort is provided. I wasn't happy with the police escort that come with us in Greece or in Poland or in Hungary, because I want to know what will happen if we will drive with our flag, with the Israeli flag, by ourselves all over Europe. And I was curious to see if something happened. The Jews that we meet in Europe during our journey, uh, they have a conflict, a big conflict, maybe not to show to everybody they are still a Jew. It doesn't matter what country you are, if it's in Germany or Greek or uh, Poland, the Jews prefer to uh, hide their identity even now. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends, uh, warm welcome to uh, the motorcyclists uh, from Israel. It's a great honor and pleasure to welcome you here um, on your way to Berlin. You riding in Hungary with the Israeli flag, it's something else. It shows that in spite of everything, we are here. Welcome. Everybody would like to drink something, so we would like to offer you uh, Hungarian beer, zero alcohol. No. Zero alcohol. <laughs> it's not a beer. <laughs> it's in Poland that the team makes its planned detour from the route taken by the original bikers to visit a place their predecessors could scarcely have imagined. To Krakow. This is Krakow. We're going to be a little bit west of Krakow. We're going to go through three countries today. We're going to leave Hungary, and then we are going through Slovakia, beautiful road, and then we're going to go to Poland. Three countries in one day. I don't know how it's going. I really don't know how it's going. I'm hoping that we won't be able to get there. Let's go on the way.
נרגש לראות איך הם ירגישו שם. אבא שלי בחיים לא היה באושוויץ. זה סמל. זה סמל של כל השואה לדעתי. בבקשה. קשה לנו, קשה לנו. I was born in Sandomierz, which is uh, east of Krakow. My family, on both sides, were very dramatically affected by the war and the Holocaust. It's your first time here? No, no, I was born here. And I'm not unique. Those that are predominantly children of survivors, they have the same issues that I had. They, uh, they call their parents damaged goods. השלושה שבועות האחרונים אצלי היה מין קשה לטעות, זה בלתי אפשרי, אני רואה בלילות, אני שומע את הצריכות, זה נוראי. מסתבר שאני רואה דברים בפוקוס, את הפרצופים של הגרמנים אני זוכר, ואני חשבתי שאני כבר מזמן, מזמן קברתי את זה. אבל זה מושך, זה תמונה אחת מושכת את התמונה הבאה, ותמונה הבאה, ותמונה הבאה. אמא שלי זרקה אותי מרכבת, העיפה אותי. והאיש שפתח את הדלת, הוא היה איש רכבת, יהודי, שעבד. הוא הצליח לפתוח את הדלת מבפנים. הוא קפץ, קפץ, והיה לו מעיל של עובדי רכבת. והמעיל הזה משך אותו מתחת לגלגלים. ואני ראיתי את ה... איך הוא נהרג במקום, איך, איך... גלגלים חתכו אותו לחץ, והצריכה איומה באותו רגע. ממש באותו רגע אימא שלי לקחה אותי והעיפה אותי החוצה, וקפצה. בקרון אחרון היה גסטאפו עם מכונת עירייה, התחיל לירות, אבל הוא הופתע, ממש הופתע, ולא פגע. וככה אנחנו ניצלנו, זה לא... קשה לתאר את הדברים. 
Вахарка. Ну, я бы еще так шел в Украине. В Украине мы торгуем в Германии. Арба швот, она не стала в Бояр. А что я гану в Хазара, в Гетто, в Имашире, и та ютет, кмат колион, терех талат гюф, пишила виоха. Я срим варбаиш, и чило. Так что я там умерет ли то, ли траот, и за... И ло я да, что не удея, что за яхла ли от памах руна, что не хвала. אבל יכול להיות שטעיתי, שבאמת טעיתי. הייתי צריך לספר ולא להחזיק את זה למעלה מ-70 שנה בפנים. כי אנחנו ממשיכים לחיות ואנחנו לא מתעסקים בזה כל יום. ועובר יום ואנחנו בחיים שלנו, אנחנו בעבודה... אני לא בטוח שאלה שעברו את זה לא מתעסקים עם זה כל יום. זה אני בטוחה. אבל אנחנו, הדור הבא, זה לא משהו שהוא שם בתודעה, וזה משהו שרק כשאתה מגיע פתאום באיזשהו... כמו המסע הזה, שפתאום דברים עולים, אחרת זה לא היה עולה. אני כל הזמן חושב, אני כל הזמן חושב, אני ראיתי את הזוועות. בתור ילד בגיל שש, שמונה, אני ראיתי איך גרמנים הורגים עם נעליים תינוקות, במו עיניי. אני ראיתי את הדברים האלה. אני ראיתי איך דרכו על זקנים. וירו בהם בראש, ובתור ילד קטן, פתאום אני שמעתי צעקות, צעקות של, הילד, של הילדים או של הזקנים או האנשים האלה, ובשנייה אחת פתאום שקט, שקט מוחלט, הם הפסיקו לצעוק, הם הפסיקו לזוז. כל החיים אני סוחף את זה, אני רואה את התמונות, אני לא יכול להיפרד מזה. זה בלתי אפשרי. לא רציתי לספר שהם יסחבו את התמונות האלה כל החיים שלהם. אולי עשיתי שגיאה, אני לא יודע. Uh, all of a sudden realize we have with us somebody that experienced this thing that, in my, that when you look at it, it looks so far away, but... There he was, and I was so touched to hear him. When you hear one person's story, it tells you the story of everyone else that can't tell their own story. מי שראה את כל הזוועה הזאת, איך הוא עדיין יכול להאמין באלוהים? שאלה מאוד מרגיזה מיליונים, אבל אני שואל את השאלה, אם הוא ראה את זה, למה הוא לא מנה את זה? מה העניינים, אמא? בסדר, מה קורה? 
בסדר. איפה נונה? תביא לי אותה. היא ישנה. אוקיי. אני נמצא פה בבריקנאו, ורציתי שזה לא נתפס. זה לא נתפס. הלכנו, נהיה לילה, ונשארנו באיזה מקום. ואחר כך, אושטיין, קומי, קומו. קמנו, עמדנו בתור. הם הולכים. היוונים לא הסתכלו אחורה שאנחנו לא הולכים. הלכו, 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 עד שלא ראיתי אותם יותר. אז הלכנו חופשי. אוקיי, פתאום אנחנו רואים אוטובוסים הולכים עם חיילים, ולא ידענו מי זה. איך שעבר האוטו, האוטו עם החיילים, שמעתי שאחד אומר לשני, חרשו. אמרתי, הם רוסים. פתאום שם את היד פה. איך שהוא שם את היד, אנחנו... הלכנו למות, חשבנו שמשהו יקרה פה. איך שמוציא, מוציא את המגן דוד. איך שראינו את המגן דוד, התחלנו לבכות. אמר, לי, אמר לנו, אל תפחדו, אני אשלח שומר שישמרו, עד שיעבור רכבת, תלו, תלכו במקום שלכם. קובי, בוא נוציא את הצדפים שהבאנו מהחוף של יפו, לישראל, תל אביב. שהגיעו כל הדרך... כל הדרך אצלנו בכיס. I think I was born July 13, 1942. And my mother at that time, knowing what was coming down the pipe, made arrangements, because she had blue eyes, blonde hair, made arrangements for phony ID to give birth at the convent hospital in San Domiege. So these people took us in, and then my mother left, and they raised me as one of their own. Have you been with the family? About three and a half years. And you thought they are your parents, or you knew? No, no. And your mother came, or My mother came it? afterwards. And after three and a half years? After three and a half years. Where has she been all this time? With the Polish underground. Oh, really? Yeah. And um, she was nervous. She came there originally with me, and then she was nervous that she would be found out. So she left. And mm -hmm. how did you react when you realized, you know, I know you were only three and a half, but... When I was born, yeah, I didn't still, react. You, you I already have memories. No, but, uh, yeah, my psychiatrist tells me that. Yeah, I still remember, yeah, okay. Yeah. But when she came to pick me up when I was three and a half, she took me away from my mother. And we asked the nephew of the people that saved me what made them do it. And, you know, why didn't other people have the chance to do it? And, and the answer is always the same. They were that kind of people. They did it because they felt they needed to, they had to, yeah. so. You know, when you always think about the people who helped, you wonder how you would do it. How you would do it, if you, in a simple session. If you were the other side, would you keep quiet? Where's the plaque? Oh, is this it? Yeah, so you see? Uh, it's a synagogue. synagogue. Yeah. It's a former synagogue built at the end of the 17th century. The president city archives. The riders push on to Warsaw. In 1939, there were more than 350,000 Jews living in the Polish capital. In the autumn of 1940, the Nazis sealed the entire Jewish population into a ghetto.
how they went like uh, cattle to the slaughterhouse. We cannot now judge them and we cannot put ourselves in their position in those days. Because uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, I were in this, uh, in this era, uh, how I uh, supposed to react. And I'll cope with it. The remaining prisoners of the Warsaw Ghetto realized that the deportations were sending people to their deaths. In January 1943, after smuggling in handguns and small explosives, a tiny resistance group fought back, seizing control of the ghetto from the Nazis. Three months later, on the eve of Passover, the Nazis mounted a massive counterattack. They bombarded the ghetto and razed it to the ground, murdering anyone they could find. Meanwhile, delegates from Britain and America met for 10 days in Bermuda to discuss Hitler's plans for the Jewish people. Despite the horrors unfolding in Europe, no agreement was reached and no action was taken. הסימבולי ביותר, גטו ורשה, להדליק את הלפיד על הלחימה של היהודים שהיו פה שלא נכנעו, נלחמו בנאצים עד שלא יכלו יותר ונהרגו. הרבה אנשים באים באיזה שהם שאלות, פוניות על זה שאולי היהודים לא נלחמו והלכו כצאן לטבח, פה ראינו סיפור שהוא אחר. ובדיוק במקום שאנחנו עומדים בו, אני חושב שזה המקום הכי ראוי להדליק את הלפיד הזה. לאן אנחנו נוסעים? אמרתי לו, הדבר הכי חשוב זה תחנת דלק ראשונה. ואחר כך אנחנו יוצאים מוורשה ללוץ'. הוא רצה לעזור לנו, אם אנחנו היינו רוצים להסתובב בוורשה, אז הוא היה מוביל אותנו ומפנה תנועה וכך הלאה. Prisoners at Lodge Ghetto were forced to manufacture goods and weapons for the Nazi war machine. Survival was based on ability to work. Lodge was one of the last of the Jewish ghettos to be liquidated. That moment, I had seen the railway, and immediately I have seen myself with my mother at the rail station, with the same transport wagon as we have seen there, and I was ashamed. I wanted <laughs> to escape from there.
I felt very angry seeing all the names. Like you want to help them and say, stop it. People that were sent to death only because they were uh, Jews. I was looking for my friend's family's name, but you know, too many names there to try to find it. It's just unbelievable. Two things get me here. One is my mother was hiding in the forest with the partisans for almost four years. Could have been here, who knows? And then maybe a spot over there, the Germans brought a thousand Jews and shot them. When I see these guys here, these 45, all going on 50, young Israelis, that's one of the reasons that it's not gonna happen again. They won't let it happen again. It's interesting to experience this on a motorcycle. You know, I've experienced it a lot of different ways, never like this, so. The most important thing for me is really to feel free driving a bike. You really escape from all troubles you may have. <laughs> By late 1944, the Allies were beginning to uncover some of the atrocities that had befallen Europe's Jews and other ethnic minorities. However, the German propaganda machine was still determined to sell a different story. Denmark had requested that the Red Cross inspect the conditions of the almost 500 Danish Jews held in the ghetto at Theresienstadt. The Germans gathered their healthy Jews together dressed them in respectable clothing, beautified the camp, and readied it for inspection. A propaganda film was made at the same time. This is the Nazi propaganda film to show the world how well Jews were treated. Two Jewish teams had to play each other and four of them was the Maccabi players, and that was in 1944. Three weeks later, after this uh, football match, they and the audience, 47,000 people, were sent to the dead camps. Pause a while as you pass by, close your eyes, and remember. Remember the time when here or near here, men, women, and children, our own fellow creatures, congregated in peace and trust, only to be arrested, humiliated, deported, and murdered in the camps that shall forever shame our civilization. Remember them, their anguish and their death,
Do not recoil in such horror. Do not descend into despair at man's inhumanity to man. Just remember, for remembering, we honor the dead and we save them from dying again in oblivion. After 24 days, traveling through eight European countries, the riders are on the final leg of their journey. As I understood, you had a very comfortable ride. Yeah. But now, uh, after a little delay... Of Just two hours delay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I come from Israel. We met, <laughs> we met here. Israeli. So, uh, you <laughs> live straight to Berlin. We have a very nice road, which you came here. But now we will go on the highway. Yeah? Great. When the highway finished, we turned to the right, right, and then left. <laughs> OK? You will lead the way. Yes, we'll lead you. No worries. <laughs> and then we'll come to the Brandenburg Gate. And uh, this is the road where the Nazis love to march. Oh. Yeah. particular moment when we saw Brandenburg Gate, everything <laughs> exploded. It was exciting. It was like a, like a victory parade. For me, it wasn't the torch itself. The focus was the people. The important thing to pass along the way to be in Auschwitz, in Lodz, in Warsaw, uh, and of course in Saloniki, and Berlin, Bulgaria, Samarkov. And that everyone told his story, or his family story. <laughs> This is a sign that never again follows us. Of course, I admire my father more, much more, when I know the, his story. I can see that, on my mind, he's a hero. The riders have finally completed the nearly 3,000 mile journey back to the site of the infamous 1936 Olympics. Close all this uh, VIP uh, block, and then we're gonna park in two lines. Okay. My cousin was not was uh, supposed to run here in the 36 Olympics, and they wouldn't let him run. Relatives of the two Jewish American athletes who were dropped on the morning of the 1936 relay race are here to take the torch from the bikers to signal the beginning of the European Maccabi Games. As the bikers enter the stadium, Sam Stoller's cousin passes the torch to Marty Glickman's daughter, 
who is proudly wearing her father's original 1936 uniform. Nancy Glickman, please light the torch! נותן בעצם את, ה... את השילוב הזה בין יהדות, היהודי החדש, זה, ה... זה הכותרת. שרוכב על אופנוע גרמני. אתה יודע, <laughs> אפשר לעשות את ההגבלות האלה, אבל גם זה, זה מיקס יפה. As this is the first time they're going to have the games in Germany, it was going to be a historic moment in time to come back in and to light the torch. We had a lot of tears and we had a lot of tears. It was very hard, he said. Look, it's better to go to Auschwitz with a horse than a horse. זה מספר את הכל. 